Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. The blackest heart, the blackest mind, the blackest man on social media, signing black in and shining again, asking you to hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Pay close attention to this message. Um, you saw the title. So to those of you that I'm addressing, and even black allies from outside of black America and black Canada and black Britannia, um, pay attention. By me addressing you and referring to you as allies, it sounds to my people on the surface like I'm betraying them because we've been told we have no allies. But I'm not addressing uh, members of any ethnicity that are not allies. So if you are not an ally in this struggle, turn us off, fuck the shuck up, fit the guck out my face, we ain't, I'm not talking to you. To those of you who have chosen to be allies, I am addressing you. So in other words, there's the rule that black people have no allies, and then there are the exceptions, individuals who've chosen to be such. If you're one of those exceptions, I am referring to you. I'm, I'm addressing you now. And I'm not addressing you with hatred or hostility, because what I'm giving you is really just information and advice that will explain something to you that would otherwise confuse you. If you mean well, I mean you well. That's just fair. That being said, anybody that's here listening and you plan on deflecting, just turn this thing off and get done with it. I'm not even tolerating dissent on this message or disagreement on this message. Don't come to me saying all lives matter. What about black on black crime? Uh, um, don't come to me saying that, those things. This is victim talk. You come, with me, come to me with any of that white Republican show bit, I'm just going to delete your comment because this ain't for that. I've already covered that or it, it previously. Done. We can, if you want to debate, we can do that another time. What I want to tell you right now, what I want to tell the prospective allies right now is this. I'm going to give you background information to explain the point. Back during the 50s and well, 60s and 70s, let's say, black folks and Latin Americans worked together in certain cities where you had populations of both. Because they had similar issues of police brutality, um, poverty, discrimination. So that being said, um, we saw Latin Americans as an allied community going through similar things. Then later on, we learned that Latin Americans had a lot of the same colorism problems that we did, same colorism hangups that we did. In Puerto Rico and in Dominican Republic, they talk about mejorar la raza, which means improve the race. And what they meant by that was marrying the closest thing to white you could find so that you would breed out whatever black blood you had over time. And of course, Puerto Rico was in the interior, especially, it's darn near an African island. And the Dominican Republic is an, is an African nation, just speak Spanish in, in the Americas. But on average, the Dominicans are darker than the Puerto Ricans. And so the Puerto Ricans looked down on the Dominicans and the Dominicans looked down on the Haitians because the Haitians on average were darker than them. And so that's what we're dealing with. We found this out. We felt betrayed, even though we had our own colorism issues. We were trying to do away with it. So we realized that that these were not allies. And some of these young, ideal Latin Americans moved on to become elders that cared nothing about black folk. Then later on, something happened with Indians. They came into the United States and they'd be usually doctors and engineers. And we found out in fairly short order their feelings on blackness. Of course, the Chinese stopped protesting with black folks in the 60s and chose instead to ingratiate themselves and white folks accepted that deal. And the Asians by extension became held up as a model minority, but the Southeast tropical Asians um, were at the bottom of the hierarchy between Asians because of their proximity to blackness, both politically and phenotypically. I mean, the Chinese called the Thai people jungle bunnies. The Chinese have a community in Thailand that is Chinese Thai, but they call the Thai people jungle bunnies. Go figure. 
So what I wanted to tell you was that we learned over the course of decades that we don't have allies. Before we believed it, John Henry Clark told us this. And one by one, different minority groups that were not black began to prove him correct. That's the rule. You've chosen to be the exception. It's going to take us, just like it took us time to get the memo about the rule, it's going to take us time to get the memo about the exceptions. So by you choosing to be allies, you must understand that when you're out there protesting with your signs, there are going to be black folks that don't believe you. It's not because they hate you. It's not because they hate your DNA. Black folks actually love everyone, but we've been trained now to believe that nobody, no one loves us back. So they're not going to believe you at first. It's going to take you time and patience. If you choose to walk that route, then may God reward you for your patience. You'll need it. But um, if you can't be patient like that, then you've got other options. One option is you decide you're not going to be an ally at all. You give up. In that case, just don't become an enemy. But remember, neutrality only helps the oppressor, not the oppressed. Shadid Muhammad is correct about that. The other option is to be an ally anyway. And to give it time. And I'll do what I can to tell my people about the exception, but I'm one guy on YouTube with 1,675 subscribers. A lot of them don't hit the share button like I asked them to. But the other option is to be an ally in private. Um, and that, by that I mean that you, you do things behind the scenes that even we would not know about, so you get no accolades. The hardest part of that is that you're going to have to go back and confront your communities. And oftentimes that will mean you're going to have to confront the majority of your elders, maybe even your own parents, uncles, aunts, and grandparents. Because they're going to have anti-black ideas. And you're going to have to say to them, I can't do certain things to help them and they're right. And that is because they know what you said and what you did and what you felt and the choices you made. And now today I, I'm, I want to do the right thing from the beginning and I can't because of what you did that was wrong in the past and they know about it. So you see, their parents that are the same age as you, that are black, know what you said, what you did, and how you felt. They told their kids that we were not their allies, that we were actually their enemies and not to be trusted. And then when I went to do the right thing, I found out what the problem is that you caused. And now today, the ones my age over there don't trust me because of what you did to their parents. Oh, we didn't do anything to their parents. We just came to this country and worked hard and succeeded. Yeah, and you sold them out. You didn't side with them against the oppressor. The oppressor here is the cousin of the colonizer of our nation back home that you left to come over here. You said there was no white supremacy, that you didn't think about race back home. But in actuality, you fail to understand that the reason our home country was colonized in the first place was because of white supremacy and you thought you were going to defeat that by migrating to a white nation? A white supremacist nation? Well, look at the house I raised you in. I've done well for you. Thank you. But, by, but look what you had to do to do it. Would you be willing to go back and say to them that you simply, you never even hated them, but that you just sold them out because you weren't ready to make the sacrifices of being them? No? Okay, well, see, now there's certain things I can't do to help. And they're right. And either I or your grandchildren are going to have to pay the price for it. That's a tough conversation to have with your own elders. I'm aware of that. You're going to have to have it anyway. Even if you chose to not be allies of us anymore, this is still a conversation you would have to have with your elders. There really is no choice that does not involve at some point having to have this conversation with your own community, most of whom are going to be elders. Because they make up the bulk of the ones 
to whom John Henry Clark was referring when he told black people, you have no friends, no allies, except who you see looking in the mirror. See, John Henry Clark was one of those who started some of this anti-mulatto rhetoric, but he was doing it based on historical evidences and facts and patterns that had happened in other places outside of the United States. He feared the same thing would repeat itself in the United States. What you don't understand is that when he talks about that treacherous mulatto that sided with the oppressor over the oppressed, he was also talking about your people. And it's not your fault. Your DNA is just your DNA. But the biggest secret about black people that will help you to know is that we actually love everybody else because we're the grandparents of the rest of humanity. We just want to be loved in return. And I'm, and we're, we're, unfortunately, many of us are coming to understand and expect that that's not going to happen. So we become paranoid. And this is the reason that just like it took a long time for us to get the memo that made us paranoid, it would take a while for us to get the memo that would um, update us so that we could at least try to identify the exceptions that identify or verify those who identify themselves as the exceptions. That's going to take us time. And I can't rush the process, even though I'll try. It's not your fault. It's not mine. It's your parents, your community's fault. You made the right decision, and that's why I'm saying it's not your fault. Other people with the same DNA sequence as you are guilty of this. But unfortunately, there's no way that I can guarantee that none of you is ever going to have to pay a price for this. Sorry about that. I wanted to update you and tell you this in order to be fair to you, because if you really are an ally, I, I want to be fair to you. And I think that the best way to overcome the barriers in the beginning is to know that they're there and know why they're there. And then you can figure out your own way from there. Thank you for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out. Asalaamu Alaikum and black heterosexual male power specifically because they don't like it.